Are you up for programming a little bit of PHP, maybe? Hmm? In this PHP programming lesson, we will demonstrate how to get the fave icon, image icon, from a URL dynamically. We can look at YouTube itself for a real-world example of how this would be a handy thing to know for awesome interactive site builders. Now, YouTube has a real-world example that you can look at really quick and see what I'm talking about. So, when somebody puts in their web links, say in their uh, header graphics up top, YouTube automatically grabs the web links fave icon image. I didn't put this image at YouTube. They're doing that dynamically. I didn't put any of these other images for these other site links either. YouTube's doing that dynamically. So I'm going to show you something similar to that, to where when your users or anybody that puts a web link on your website, you can fetch or get the fave icon image for that web link dynamically as long as your application has access to that web link. Okay, create a new test file called test.php. Now before we talk about rendering a fave icon, I'm just going to show you a really quick, simple script that you can use that will check to see if a file exists somewhere on another server on the web, somebody else's website. First you want to create a variable that represents the external file that you want to see if it exists. So the one we'll use in this example is developphp.com's faveicon.ico file. Then we're going to get the headers for that URL into an array and that array is going to be stored into a variable called headers. And this is what the PHP manual says about get headers. Returns an array with the headers sent by the server in response to an HTTP request. So now with the headers array, we can run preg match over the first index, the first item in the headers array. And we're going to check to see if we get a match of 200, then we will know the file exists. If there's no match for the 200, then we can say the file does not exist. So let's just save that file, control S, and run it on our PHP enabled server. Now it's important for you guys to keep in mind that you can run this sort of script to see if any kind of file exists on some other server or on some other website. Maybe you're looking for an index.php file, or maybe you're looking for an index.html file to see if that exists on the website. Or maybe you want to see if a, a contact.html exists, or whatever you're looking for on an external website. Any image file, or any text files, documents, whatever. Okay, so when I run this on my server, I get the file exists, because that faveicon.ico file was seen. But let's say I name my faveicon file something like logo.ico. And if I refresh, it says the file does not exist. So what that means is you're successfully looking on an external server to see if the file exists. So let's change that back to faveicon.ico. So let's just change this up a little bit to be more like the scenario where you're letting users type in web links and you want to get the fave icon to display on your website. So we can just create a new variable called web link and make that equal to the web link that you want to access the fave icon of. Now we can just remove that and then change this to fave icon URL. And then this part of the string will remove the site, the web link part of that string, and we'll add it to the front dynamically like this with a dot. So we're appending to that string the web link. Now you want to feed the get headers function, the fave icon URL instead. So this is going to be the web link that your user puts up, or an example of the web link that one of your users would put up. And you're going to check to see if the faveicon.ico file is in fact in place. Now later on in this same video tutorial, I'm going to show you a whole different other approach that lets you get the exact name of the faveicon file. So if somebody names their faveicon logo.ico, you can still access it in the script I'm going to show you in the latter part of this video. So you're going to get two scripts for doing this. This first one is a very basic way that you can just see if the fave icon exists, and if it does, you can render it. All right, so basically, if the file exists, I'm going to echo out an image tag. So I can just change all of this, and I'll put this in between single quotes. Open myself an image tag, and for the source of the image, I'm going to make that equal to fave icon URL, because it was found. So since my string here is encapsulated in single quotes, single quote, dot, and then my variable, then dot, single quote. So I'm just putting my dynamic variable in the image source attribute. And then you can say else the fave icon does not exist, 
or just do nothing. You can just remove this else condition altogether, and that way an image just won't show up. Or you can put an image source to a default fav icon that you have in your images folder on your server. You can just show a default image if it's not found. Now let's run this. We'll refresh our test page. You see, I get developphp.com's fav icon. Now that just happens to be because developphp does in fact have a fav icon named favicon.ico, which most websites, I would say 95% of websites, are going to have a fav icon with the name of favicon.ico. But you'll have some that don't have that exact string as their icon file name. So let's change this to Adam Corey. Let's run this same file. Refresh it. You see, you can get any fav icon from any website. Now what you can do is package this up into a little function that will let you call on it dynamically every time you need to render a little icon for dynamic web links. Now I'm going to show you a totally different approach altogether that does the same thing pretty much, but it's a little more targeted and advanced and it lets you get the exact name of the favicon.ico file or whatever, it might be a .png. So whatever the name is, you're going to be able to access it regardless of what the name is. So this one is a little more refined and better than the first approach that we just looked at. All right, so what you have here is a function that I wrote called getFavicon. Now this function can be loaded in externally. You can include it into any scripts that need it. And it can be a PHP module of sorts that you can run every time that you want to get the favicon for any dynamic URL. You can see these lines are the usage of it. So here's where we're actually using the getFavicon function. We have a website which is the dynamic URL that the person is putting into our website. You're going to want to make sure that you strip any HTTP colon forward slash forward slash www dot that might be on the front of any strings where your people are putting in dynamic web links. So that's what I've done. I just made an example for you where all of the things in front of the URL that are commonplace on the web usually, you can just strip that out and get it down to where it's just the .com or the .net and the root name of the domain. Then you pass that through the get favicon function here. And that's in a variable called favicon. Okay, so now let me run this. And when we see that it's working, I'm going to explain all of these lines of code to you very quickly. Here, let me change this to web intersect. That way we see a change in our script and when we refresh it. Refresh, and you see? So that one also, this script also gets the fav icon, but this one does it in a more targeted way. And it doesn't matter if the fav icon for a website is named poopoo.png, it will still grab it and you'll be able to access that image because we're actually accessing the, the markup of that file. So when the get fav icon function is called to run here by your application and you're feeding it the site, the URL, as the only argument that the function takes in. So what you do is you run file get contents on that URL and you want to make sure you add the HTTP forward slash www and all that stuff if it's not already in place in the URL. So file get contents, all of the contents of that web link, all of the HTML code inside of it is packed into a variable called HTML. Then we create a new DOM object by specifying new DOM document. And you can check out the PHP manual for DOM document. So on the DOM object, we're going to run its method load HTML and we're passing it one parameter of the HTML that we got from that web link. Then we create an array of all of the links in the page. Now let me show you what I'm talking about links. I'm not talking about A tags like clickable links. I'm talking about the link element. So say for instance I'm at web intersect. I can go and view the page source and you'll see that in my head element of my web page, I have a link element. And that link element is to my fav icon file. I also have more link elements, one here, and that's to my style sheet. So you'll have sites that have more than one link element, depending on what the site is accessing externally. So don't confuse links in our code here with clickable A tags. These are the actual link elements. So you're creating an array called links. And you get that array by running get elements by tag name link over the DOM object. So all of the link elements on the page will be in this array. Then we just initialize the fav icon variable 
and we run a for loop over that array, the links array, to access all of the items within it. Now, while this for loop is running, each of those array items are going to be accessed. And we can access them and put them in a local variable called link for each one by specifying the links array and going into it and getting the items that we want according to how many times this loop is passed. So the first run of the loop, the first item comes out. Second run of this for loop, the second item comes out, so on and so forth. Then you run a condition that says if the link rel attribute is equal to icon, then you know that you have access to that fav icon by accessing its href attribute. So here, let's go back to the source code of Web Intersect, for example. You can see I have a link. It has a rel attribute. It's equal to icon. Then it has an href attribute, and that's equal to whatever the file name is of my fav icon. And I could name it logo or favicon.png or logo.gif if I wanted to, but that wouldn't be very smart. But people do that sort of thing. So this little script lets you get the actual value of the href attribute. So no matter what the fav icon file is named, if it's there, you can get access to it. And then you just return to the calling portion of the script that called this function to run right here. You're returning the fav icon. So that's why we put it into a local variable called fav icon. And then you can set up your image tag for the source of that website and its fav icon, the name, the exact name of its fav icon file. And this script shows you a way that you can go into the, the HTML of any website, basically, and access things that you want to access within the document object model. So these two scripts have demonstrated two different approaches for getting the fav icon dynamically for any external web links that might be placed into your website. One is a little bit more effective and targets the name of the file a little bit better, which is this second approach. Okay, so that shows you how to create your own functions called getFavIcon, or you can run it in line like we did with the first script. We just ran an inline script. We didn't make a function out of it, but you can easily wrap that into a function called getFavIcon. So remember, the first example is very quick, basic, just takes a couple of lines, but it's not as accurately going to get the name of the favicon. Your script pretty much relies on the favicon being named favicon.ico. But if you want a more targeted script, you can use the second one. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this PHP programming tutorial. I'll see you in the next lesson.